Hi folks, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we will discuss about the nephroblastoma or it is also called as the Willems tumor. So it has the name of Willems tumor because Willems was the first scientist who described about the nephroblastoma. So basically nephroblastoma is the malignant embryological type of the tumor which arising from the nephrogenic blastoma. So the nephrogenic blastoma embryologically, it is supposed to develop the normal kidney. But when there is any type of mutation at the level of nephrogenic blastoma in the embryological life, it will give rise to the nephrogenic rest, which are the precancerous lesions. So basically, histologically, Nibelin's tumor is a triphasic type of the tumor. So it contains three elements. One is the blastimal component, which histologically seen as the small blue cells, while the second component is the epithelial component, which represents the glomeruli, tubules, or the papillary structures. And the third is the stromal element, which represents a supporting type of the tissue. So all three elements are always present in the Wim's tumor, but they are variable in amount. So such as sometimes the epithelial component can be a predominant component. Majority of the time, Wim's tumor is present in the children at the age of less than 10 years, and the maximum incidence age is the two to three years. And 10 to 15% of the time, these are associated with the syndromes and the congenital anomalies, which we will discuss in our later slides. And one to 2% of the time, they are familial in nature. So discussing about the etiology, WT1 gene is mainly implicated in the tubular genesis of the Wilms tumor. So WT1 is located at the chromosome 13 and the other syndromes which predispose the formation of the Wilms tumor is the one is the VAGR, which includes Wilms tumor itself, aniridia, genitourinary anomalies, and some intellectual disabilities. While the other syndrome is the backwith Weidman syndrome, which is also known as the organomegaly syndrome, in which along with the Wilms tumor, there will be the macroglacia. It means like a enlargement of the tongue, hemi hypertrophy, and few other organs will be enlarged as well. So discussing about the nephrogenic rest, as we described earlier, these are arising from the nephrogenic cells or the nephrogenic blastema, which imitates the formation of the normally developing kidney in the uh, adult life. But when these persist after 36 weeks, they have the capability to develop into the nephroblastoma. So it depends upon where the nephroblastoma are, are located, they are divided into the perilobar nephrogenic rest or into the intralobar uh, nephrogenic rest. And when the nephrogenic rest are present in the one side of the kidney, so there are maximum chances that the nephroblastoma can develop into the opposite kidney as well. So let's first discuss about what is the perilobar nephrogenic rest and the intralobar nephrogenic rest. So the perilobar nephrogenic rest, as the name implies, they are located around the peripheral region of the cortex. So when they are located on the periphery of the outer cortex, they have a distinct type of the borders. It means we can clearly demarcate or make a distinction between the blastimal cells and the normal developing kidney. And sometimes they, they acquire the hyperplastic nature. So when they acquire the hyperplastic nature, they increase in size. They increase in size such as they can make the kidney massively enlarged and make the kidney uh, non-functional, which can be easily recognized or diagnosed on the radiology as well. And this phenomena is known as the diffuse hyperplastic perilobar nephroblastomastosis. And majority of the time, these rests are uh, associated with the sporadic tumors, associated with idiopathic hemihypertrophy or the back with vitamin syndromes. While the histology, we are uh, in this picture, we are going from capsule towards the inner medulla. So this highlights the this connective tissue is the renal capsule, while this represents the outer cortex. So here we can clearly see that there are bundles of the numerous small brown blue cells which are located on the outer cortex, but we can clearly make a distinction between the normal appearing tubules 
and these blastable cells. And when they acquire the hyperplastic nature, they massively in, in, enlarge in size and they, they develop the nephroblastomastosis, which, uh, which make the kidney non-functional and it can be easily recognized on the radiology. While discussing about the intralobar, well, as the name implies, they are mainly located in the inner cortical region or into the medullary region. So they are, they are completely uh, infiltrate the stromal cells. So we cannot make a distinction between whether uh, these are the uh, small round blue cells are the stromal uh, side or they are the they are the intralobular blastimal cells. Mostly they are single, but they can be diffuse as well. And they are mostly uh, combined with the, the associated with the WT1 mutations, dense dress syndrome or the VAGR syndromes. So discussing about their histology. So uh, here now we are uh, seeing in the inner cortical or in the medullary region. So here we can see a single foci of the intralobular uh, blastimal cells. And this, uh, this is another uh, single foci of the intralobular uh, uh, nephrogenic rest, but they can be diffused as well. But we cannot make a distinction between the intralobular nephrogenic rest and the uh, small round stromal cells. While discussing about the macroscopic features, before we discuss about the macroscopic features, first, we should know that in the pediatric population, when there is a high suspicious of the Wilms tumor or any type of the tumor in the kidney in the pediatric population. So the kidney biopsy in those type of the scenarios is always, always contraindicated because if they do the kidney biopsy on the pediatric population, when the suspicious of the tumor is high, they will upstage the tumor. So after when, when they pin out the tumor through the biopsy, they will, uh, they will cause the seeding of the tumor to the renal capsule or to the gerota fascia. So they will upstage the tumor. So always remember there is a contraindication of the uh, kidney biopsy in the pediatric population when there is a high suspicious of the tumor. But when we receive the large kidney specimen, they are mostly large, solitary, spherical mass, sharply demarcated from the renal parenchyma, but sometimes they can distort the kidney contours as well. And, where, and they are commonly very friable, lobulated, pink gray in color. And some authors make their analogy to the mesh potatoes as well. While discussing about the microscopic feature, as we discussed earlier that this tumor is the triphasic type of tumor. So it includes the blastimal component, which represents the small round blue cells, epithelial component, which includes the uh, glomeruli or the tubular structures and the stromal component, which arises from the mesenchyma. So it represents the supporting cells. So the, how we recognize the blastable cells, they are small, closely packed, mitotically active cells. They have a very, very uh, scant cytoplasm, but their nucleoli mainly is uh, inconspicuous or is really unable to see, while the epithelial component represents the formation of the immature or the mature type of the tubule, the glomerular structures, and sometimes they form like a rosette type of the structures, while the stromal component describes the smooth, sometimes there are smooth muscles, sometimes there are skeletal muscle, or sometimes there are fibroblastic differentiation. So mainly the stromal component comes from the mesial canal uh, origin. So discussing about the histology, so this, uh, this is the classic picture of the Wilms tumor, which represents this area, which contains these blue cells, represents the blastimal component, while these rosé type of the structure are the immature tubules, represents the epithelial component, while this mixoid type of the uh, cells are the spindly cells, which are present, these are the fibroblasts, so this area represents the mesial thymal component. So in this picture, we can see all three components are the present, but always remember they can be in the variable amount. Sometimes epithelial, 
component can be a uh, uh, can be a majority time of the presence sometimes the measle compound uh, com type of component can be predominant so it it is variable so if we make a, a good guess on the amino histochemistry so we can clearly see that the epithelial component will be positive for the cytokeratins or the pain keratins while the blastemal phase or the component will be present uh, will be positive for the wt1 pex8 while the measle camel component will be positive for the vimatin or the other measle camel uh, uh, stains so it's, it's now it's clear like a blastemal is a wt1 positive pex8 positive epithelial will be positive for the pen keratin and the stromal will be positive for the vimatin well after diagnosing the uh, wilms tumor it is highly highly important to give a uh, comment or to make a comment on the anaplasia, uh, whether anaplasia is present or not, because majority of the time it is not present. It is only present into the five to ten percent of the tumor, but it has the very significant role. If the anaplasia is present, it means the tumor is going to be very much resistant to the chemotherapy. So it is highly important for the oncology to know that whether the anaplasia is present or not present. So what are the components which are included into the anaplasia, which first includes as a tripolar or multipolar mitotic figures, or in other words, we can say bizarre type of the mitotic figures. The second is the marked nuclear enlargement or the uh, enlargement of the cell with and having a nucleus with this, which is the hyperchromasia. So this is the picture which highlights the uh, anaplasia. So on this left side, we can see the nuclear is much more enlarged and much more hyperchromatic in nature. Or we can uh, this arrow represent the second. Or we can see few more when it is present. This is the two components. So the third component is the tripolar type of the mitotic figure, or sometimes it can be a multipolar as well. Or in other words, we can call them as a bizarre type of the mitotic figures. So when the anaplasia is present, it is the tumor is going to be resistant to the chemotherapy. So after diagnosing Wilms tumor, we have to make a comment on the anaplasia presence or not present. So this is the end of my uh, presentation. Thank you so much for your time.